Oh, dear Rose, and today we're going to be talking about belonging again, section 26. Um, where it isn't given that everyone in a family is close, decisions to go see a movie together suddenly become statements about if members of a family love one another. If it isn't given that people like each other, a day where one family member is stuck at the office longer than expected suddenly enters the mind as possible evidence that the relationship is broken. Where it isn't a given that people believe in Christ, failure to attend church becomes a statement on if they are saved, and so on. These are some examples, as we've been describing, uh, say, last in section 25, 24, 25, where we've really been talking about social plausibility structures, meditating structures, all these things that help us feel like something is given. Um, and where things are not given, the meaning of choices transforms. Um, where it is given, like the, in this example, where it's given that members of a family love one another, the fact that the, that the mother is stuck at the office for an extra two hours doesn't mean that the mother is trying to avoid the family or the father is trying to avoid the family. Um, that, that possibility is not on the table, so givens reduce um, possible interpretations. Uh, givens are hermeneutically limiting. They help us have shared intelligibility. Um, and marriage and social orders are very strongly tied together, and so marriage is a kind of good case study to sort of explore how um, givens and releases and existential tensions all uh, work together. You know, marriage, we can say, is an establishment of givens, for traditionally neither spouse will have sex or children with people outside the marriage. The possibility of interco intercourse or childbearing with others is gone, which, is, which establishes existential stability. The spouses no longer need to think about having children with other people, and if that thought drifts into their minds, they immediately know what to do with it, cast it aside. They don't wonder if they should entertain it or if there's something to do with it. It's given that they need to cast it aside. Um, now, of course, if marriage is oppressive, that could be a bad thing. The thought could free them. Uh, but where you don't know for sure what to do with thoughts, that means you have to think them, and that means you have to take on responsibility for them, and that means there's an increase of existential tension. Um, Thanks to the existential stability marriage can provide when the spouse interacts with members of the opposite sex, for example, uh, talk with friends and the like, not only do both spouses not have to worry about if the other is falling in love with someone else, though as trust wanes, this thought can appear, but also each spouse independently knows what to do with such thoughts. Considering possibilities can cause existential anxiety and lead people into decisions with terrible consequences. But since we can never know what will happen in the future, there is always a gap between knowledge and decisions. There is always room for choice. Thanks to givens, though, we don't have to worry about that gap, and the likelihood we are tricked by it reduces. At the same time, though, givens can oppress, and maybe that gap could be an avenue of freedom. And what we, what we mean when we say there's always room for choice is that um, whenever there's a possibility that has not been realized or explored, you can always wonder what it would be like. Um, ideas are not experiences. And um, there's always infinitely more ideas than the singular course of experiences that constitute our life. And so once we're open up to possibility, it's rather infinite. And this is why givens, um, you know, givens really hold back a lot because when it's given that you should live X way, then there's one path to consider. It's, it's kind of funny because the choice is almost between one path or infinite possibility. It's either one or infinite in some respects. And so, you know, givens keep us to the one and close us off from the infinite, but that also means it can close us off from, say, infinite weight, the infinite weight of that possibility. But from another angle, we can see it, see um, givens keep us from the, uh, the infinite freedom of infinite possibility. It all just depends upon the orientation. Um, but to, to, to touch on how we've been describing how individual um, beliefs, individual ways of life are supported by the social um, environment that none of us believe in a vacuum, uh, you know, we could ask the question, what will happen if couples around me begin practicing poly uh, polyamory, for example? Uh, suddenly I may begin wondering what my spouse thinks about polyamory and if it's acceptable to, and if it's acceptable to have sexual relationships with others. Uh, even if my spouse claims uh, sexual ex exclusivity is moral, my mind can still uh, wonder and wander, and this in can increase the likelihood my trust wanes, maybe, along with my happiness. Surrounded by possibility, it's hard to trust stability. Um, I could also begin wondering if perhaps polyamory would be enjoyable and even help my marriage. Unda undoubtedly, that is what some people will claim, and across large enough of a population, surely there will be some for whom this proves to be the case. Um, since I cannot know for sure what is the case without doing it, for ideas are not experiences, there is always 
doubt regarding unrealized possibilities. I must exist in a state of existential anxiety precisely because of what other consenting adults choose to do, a matter of high order complexity to allude to experiencing thinking. In this way, the choices, the choices of others do in fact impact me. How others choose to be married impacts how I am married. Freedom is never limited. And in a similar way, um, marriages entail difficulties, but if it is a given that divorce isn't an option, when I encounter these difficulties, the way I experience them will be different. The thought I should get a divorce will not cross my mind, and this can have emotional ramifications. Perhaps feeling like I can get a divorce will make me calmer because I won't feel like I'm in a prison, but perhaps it will make me more upset because I won't have the big picture in mind. It's hard to say, and likely axiomatic, the point is that the loss of a given impacts everyone profoundly, and how a given is lost is due to the choices of free people that don't seem to impact others, but do. We are all in this together, and unless totally isolated, all of us existentially impact one another, stabilizing or destabilizing. Neutrality seems impossible. Um, so beliefs are always collectively supported, collectively informed, and collectively um, approached. If I believe X, but everyone around me believes Y, then how I feel about X will be very different. Now, maybe what everyone around me, uh, maybe marriage is oppressive, and maybe polyamory is liberating uh, the human individual in new ways that are good for them. Uh, but the, the point is that if everyone around me is practicing polyamory or different forms of marriage, then my existential stability about my marriage will shift. And of course, people can say, well, get over it, you know, just have confidence in your own choices. Um, but that's very idealistic. It's not so simple. Since certainty is not possible, all that's possible is ultimately confidence, as talked about in the conflict of mine. Then my relation with my truths always have to be things I hold with an open hand. I can never be certain about them. So that's very, um, my feeling of their certainty is actually a feeling of confidence. And confidence is emotional. And emotions are, in fact, profoundly um, shaped and impacted by the people around me. Uh, we are connected in very powerful ways. Um, so there's truth to the idea that you should just be able to make whatever choice you make and, um, and believe in it, regardless of whatever, what other people think. And surely there will be some individuals who are capable of doing that, uh, but that will likely be a minority. For the majority, the lack of social support will likely um, turn them inward and greatly existentially destabilize them and make them turn to totalitarianism, uh, which is very problematic. For more by OG Rose, please visit ogrose.com for the whole Belonging Again series. You can find a playlist, a list on Medium, and thank you so much for your time.